Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. And this is where they tell their stories. I am your host, Pablo Fuentes. Hey, lovers of small businesses and good stories in general. Welcome to episode 104 of Small Business War Stories. And today I sat down with Jeremiah Flynn of Jeremiah's Photo Corner in Santa Rosa, California. And we talked about uh, film cameras and we talked about old school photography and new school and what it means for people to have this yearning for analog, for connecting with uh, with other people in an era where everything's becoming faster, everything is digital and you uh, hear a lot about the latest and greatest technology. What does it mean to slow down a little bit? Um, and uh, I personally love film photography, so I um, definitely was very interested in the subject because for me, film photography allows me to slow down and pay attention more in a world where we're, our attention is constantly sliced. And uh, the other thing we talk about too is in the 21st century, how does a company and a business like that uh, make it as a business? So basically, how do you supplement the sale of film and, and uh in cameras with uh, other things like services and also in Jeremiah's case, he is a very talented tintype photographer. So how do these services that he provides for people as a photographer supplement his income in such a way that he can make this work? Because this is definitely a work of, of passion. I mean, he, is, um, he has a successful business, but it's definitely something that he absolutely loves to do. And he is piecing together his income in ways that allow him to do that, including, again, being a photographer. This episode of uh, Small Business War Stories is brought to you by Proven. Proven is a company that I started, and it is a small business hiring tool. So if you're interested in hiring for your small business, go check out proven.com, and um, we would love to have you as a customer. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode, number 104, with Jeremiah Flynn of Jeremiah's Photo Corner in Santa Rosa, California. And we are live here in beautiful Santa Rosa, California. And today I have the pleasure and honor to sit down with Jeremiah Flynn. Yeah. We've uh, we've spent a solid hour nerding out on various aspects of film photography uh, before before we start rolling here. That's true. So how did you how did you get started with this? What uh what problem you said you told me you've been in business for nine years? Yes. Story's okay. been open for nine years. So tell me what? How do you? So what? You know, to put our uh, listeners here in a setting, we are in a um, beautiful store that has hundreds of vintage cameras here, like film cameras. Do you do any digital stuff? In it? We do some digital stuff. Most of what we do, though, is film based, and so, um, so yeah. So when it's 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 more film based, but we do do digital stuff. It's it's kind of it's kind of weird. We do high end digital stuff, okay. But then for film world, kind of cross the board, you know, anything from a few years old to you know, many 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 years old, hundred years old even sometimes. Wow, wow. So in we can we can talk. I mean, I'd love to talk a little bit more about film photography and analog stuff. But let, let's even go back to your origin story. So what? How is it that you got started with a um, camera store? camera store okay so uh well uh back in the day i kind of i'll say i reluctantly got into photography in the first place so um you know graduated from high school what do i do and i was like oh i'm gonna be an architect that sounds romantic and started doing that direction and through photography of, of architecture i realized that some photography was good some photography actually captured the essence of a space and some didn't and so yeah i was just naturally drawn towards photography and like what makes a good picture and what makes a bad picture and so i started doing photographies to kind of document you know whatever architecture i thought i was going to be making and um and then photography just kind of won me over yeah. and went that direction um and so i studied photography got a degree in photography got out of that and was like how do i make money oh i didn't really mm -hmm. have any business aspects or any business foundations to really fall back on so sure. um realized kind of hustling wasn't my thing and so i started working at another photography retail shop that uh went out of business 
though that was a much bigger operation than um, kind of what I envisioned. After Actually, after they were closing, I was like, well, if I ever wanted to have a photography store of my own, now's the time to do it. And that was, yeah, nine years ago. And so I was like, take the leap now or don't and talk to lots of friends. And they were like, yeah, you know, right now the iron's hot. You've, you know, there's not going to be a photography store where you, where you've been, you know, the clientele, they all know you. Why so you, this? so you bought the store? No, no, no. a different system. So we, oh, okay. it was, it's much smaller. The other store was four times, five times larger than what we are. And, and also what we were trying to do here is, is much more film based, vintage based, also service based, a lot of customer service. I work with the schools. I kind of have, yeah, you know, just kind of personal relationships with a lot of the teachers. And, um, and so that was. So all the photography students come here and buy their first, uh, oftentimes their first film camera yeah. from you. Yeah. yeah and we were just discussing that the camera that I was carrying yesterday when we met. That yeah. uh, Canon A1 is a particularly popular one. That's a great one. Canon A1 is one you can put in people's hands. It's not intimidating. It's not heavy. Easy to use. It can be. Yeah. It can be pretty intuitive to actually look through, and you kind of go like, "Oh, that's what the light meter is telling me, and how to change the settings and stuff." So it's it's definitely a good a good first camera. It was my first camera too, actually. It was, yeah. So it it. Uh, I had a Rico with a pen. It was a kind of a. It was a poor man's version of a k1000 yep yep it's like a rico or something and i used it came out Pentax. right and then my dream camera that i couldn't afford was a canon a1 uh-huh and now i got one that i bought for i think 50 bucks at a garage sale perfect well that's the thing too is you can get into photography kind of i would say the back door you can like open up your your parents closet and be like oh my god look they have this nikon f yep. let me go down to jeremiah's and see if this is worthwhile yeah and and then well as we were talking about i might walk out of here with <laughs> one of your nikon f so it's true i'm sure it belonged to somebody's grandparents uh, i'm not sure who but yeah <laughs> so let's get back a little bit into the so you have a uh, successful business here and you're you know you deal with students you deal with yeah. people there's been a revival of everything analog, right? So sure. for, for a while, I want to say in the, call it the mid-90s to mid-2000s, it was mm-hmm. like uh, everything was like, I want more digital, I want CDs, I want a faster digital thing. Sure. Um, and I think there's been a little bit of a swing of the pendulum back towards I want something something that's authentic. The analog, you cannot imitate the analog feel and the analog, um, you know, sort of uh, look of something. So what what have you seen in terms of even the last 10 years, how people's perceptions have evolved about film cameras? Yeah. Th- th- so, you know, 1999, 2000, 2001, there was just, oh, my God, digital film is dead. It's like <laughs> people were very quick to jump off the film bandwagon and onto the digital bandwagon. And uh, they realized, I think at that point, people were chasing, uh, They actually, they weren't even sure what they were chasing. It was like, I yeah. wanted more megapixels. Speed. Yeah, exactly. Speed, technology. I just want more technology. Oh, God, I love technology. Put it all, you know, I, that's what I want everywhere in every aspect of my life. Yeah. And so a lot of film cameras kind of got put away then, you know, and people started getting small point-and-shoot digital cameras. The quality wasn't necessarily there, but a lot of digital cameras or I should say a lot of digital photos just weren't being printed. And that's the same, it's same true, it's the same thing that's, you know, most of the people take pictures on their, their phones now or with their digital cameras, and it's some ridiculously small percentage of pictures taken digitally are ever printed. Right. You know, most of the time they're putting on Instagram or they're putting them on Facebook, which is fine, um, but it, it's with film cameras now and the resurgence of kind of this hands-on and, and having an analog tangible evidence of, of and the workflow of the whole way through is very tangible especially if you're in the dark room doing your own stuff though most people i don't think are, are doing that still um but at the same time you have film you have negatives you have this camera that maybe belonged to your grandfather or your parents or whoever it was and so there's kind of a, a nostalgia for that and it's crazy now we get kids in who are 18 19 20 who don't really know what film is and it's like what like and they're like oh, i've never shot a film camera i don't know and so you put a film camera through them and even something as simple as taking a camera off the shelf having them look through it and manually focusing it and they realize like whoa i have control over this like it's not just all happening automatically for me i 
have control. And it's like, yes, you have control, but... Yeah. You know. Well, you become more of an artist than, than just somebody who presses a button. Right? It has to be, yeah. It's much more deliberate. Whether, yeah. or, not, whether or not you know it, you're yeah. controlling the variables yeah. and you can let the machine control the variables or not, but there are certain yeah. things... I happen to be an extreme nerd when it comes to all this stuff, so I have I have a lot of records. I, yes. have, I have a reel to reel player. Uh -huh. I have an eight track player. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, and I don't own a television, so great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, to me, and, and in part of it is like it's a, to me. I think it's a um, almost a reaction to all that stuff and technology, right? Because your yeah. phone is like designed to constantly demand your attention and to constantly pull you in different directions and to actually produce anxiety that is only cured by the dopamine hit of yeah. another like or another thing right and i think that it to me is like the antidote is is analog yeah i mean i just slowing down the workflow i mean a lot of people always ask they're confused they're like why is anybody shooting film and i'm like i put a camera in their hand and sometimes it hits them then and sometimes mm -hmm. it hits them when they take the picture and they go, oh, I tried to look at the back of the camera and I realized it was film. And I was like, kind of like, how did that make you feel? Yeah. And usually people are like, I was calm because I couldn't do anything else. Like, mm -hmm. like I was like, you stayed emotionally present in the moment. It's cool. Huh? And, then, and then it's like when you pick up your pictures, it's like Christmas. Right. Exactly. Like, what What did I get? That's so much so exciting that yeah. we would like, you know, our film comes in on Friday afternoons and we call everybody and, you know, most of the people come in, you know, within like two hours, they're like, oh, I left work early to come and see my pictures. And you're yeah. like, this is so great. Yeah. So it's, so it's, it's, a, it's a re, almost a regaining of a lost feeling, of yeah. a lost experience. That kind of like delayed gratification, which yeah. we have none of now. It's yeah. like, if it's delayed, then it's ruined. But yeah. it's like, oh, wait, it's delayed just because it has to go to the lab, get printed, it comes back, and you see it. And you're like, oh, look at my memories. I've already processed them emotionally. And now I'm kind of, reliving them and i've already kind of assigned them as being important or 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 not but at the same time yeah. you, you have those tangible memories to go along with the memories in your yeah. head and so ah, win-win that's beautiful yeah. that's beautiful now i am not the great i, I have an, a deep deep appreciation for this place and if, you know as, as evidenced by the fact that you and i spent quite a bit of time before we started <laughs> rolling tape here about talking about all these crazy cameras that uh you know we, you know a lot more about than I do, but I know quite a bit about. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I nerd out on guitars and cameras like we're talking <laughs> about. Um, how, to what extent, uh, I, I think I'm a little bit on the extreme of this, but like what, how does the general public relate to film cameras and to history? And uh, because a lot of the stuff we've gone down some rabbit holes are probably pretty rare conversations for you to have. <laughs> it's, it's true. Everyone kind of has a has something like it's kind of surprising the past couple of years actually what we've been selling a lot of our point and shoot cameras very simple they just they just want film they yeah. kind of don't care about the interface or the control they just want to have a film camera yeah like and, those like those old olympus yeah like Olymp xams or yeah like Woo, well, those will be the xas and stuff like that oh, those are little black ones right yeah, yeah those ones those ones have give you some more control but like even like the the olympus stylus epics okay and you know the little point and shoots a little yeah you know though they're just kind of the cheapy things yep. that you would get at you know walgreens or whatever back in the day yep and so people are liking those just to get that film i will say look or uh, what I think even more so, even though they're like, I want the film look, I think they want the that workflow yeah. where it's like they take the picture and they're done. Like kind of, unless you go into the dark room, like you've made all the decisions, like the lighting was good. This is how I'm going to compose it. I'm going to click the shutter and it's done as opposed to, you know, a lot of digital photographers were like, ah, I'm, you know, they come in and they're blurry eyed and they're like, I've been sitting editing photos all day at the computer. And yeah, like, what's crazy, I don't use, I don't do, I don't do any post on film. Yes, exactly. Almost, almost zero. Is and it? when I, I had a period of about a year or two where I shot digital, uh -huh. and I would spend a ton of time in Lightroom adjusting this curve and that curve. Right. And I, in film, I barely do any. Yeah. And so that that's what most people who shoot film, they're like, wow. They'll be like, you know, some people are like, oh, film is so limiting. And then other people who try it go like, wow, it's so liberating. Yeah. I'm off of my computer. I take the pictures. I drop off the film to yeah. you guys at the lab. And then... It comes back and I'm like, great. And maybe it's a CD. And they're always like, wow, the scans are so good. And I'm like, well, give yourself some credit too. You know, yeah. give film some credit too. That it's like, wow, the tones are so soft and pleasing. And it just, it looks how you remembered it. It's like, yeah, I mean, that's it, the whole process all the way around 
the variables are are controllable the variables are are known for the most part and yeah. controllable so it's like you know if you get into it and you start understanding how film behaves yeah like people it did for 100 something years before yeah. digital it's like oh you can make the picture how you want it to look right now we're talking about the romance and the love of it and the a lot of the art of it let's talk about the business side of it because you sure. have to this is your livelihood right yes. so you have to uh, I mean, you, you are a very, very talented tintype photographer. Uh, we you. are surrounded by some of your work here uh, where we're sitting. What? How would you say the breakdown is between your work as a photographer versus selling hardware versus selling film versus yeah. like some of you also have a service component, right? Yeah. And so uh, to survive, we need all of those revenue streams. We We need all of them and we need to push all of them all of the time. I mean, some of them are seasonal. And some of them, you know, kind of come and go depending on, you know, for whatever the economy or depending on the weather or depending on whatever, you know, we get, uh, we do some online sales too, though mm -hmm. that's a very small percentage of what we do. Most of it is people walking into the store mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah, and from a business point of view, yeah. So we do retail sales. Uh, we wouldn't be still, we wouldn't be here if we were just dependent on retail sales. We Interesting. do. So I just, the margin and the stuff. You know, I've been, so I've been with this store nine years. I worked at another store for seven plus years. And, you know, so it was back before the digital age. And back then, you know, your profit margins, if you want to talk numbers, you know, profit margins might have been up in the 40s or 50, well, maybe not 50, but up in the 40s, 30, sure. 8, you know, 40. And the distributors were photographic specific, like photo specifically distributing to photographic retail stores mm -hmm. and because there were a ton of photographic retail stores. Um, but over the years, now I'm getting a lot of stuff from consumer electronics distributors and they don't, they're not operating on like, oh, we need to give you a 40% margin. They're operating like, you should be happy if you're getting a 21% margin. Oh, and by the way, you need to hit a minimum order that we've set for, you know, computer electronics or consumer electronics so you need to order fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff if you want to get free shipping and oh well you know tech not to complain about distributors but it's just the reality of what it no, is no, yeah, it's real you know i um, even my sales rep he was like oh you know i'm you know i'm also the sales rep for office depot and i'm all <laughs> like office depot yeah. i just want to get some film and some dark room paper like yeah. Yeah. and so i i have to kind of play by the same rules you know, being a small retailer because the distributors are distributing to these, you know, very large right. retailers. But there is, there is on the other end of this, uh, also a positive thing with the way that the market has developed because you mm -hmm. also sell on Etsy. Yes. So, so you're sell. able to sell to a much broader market than, you know, the, the North Bay right here. Yeah. But it, it is, it is, it, it's a small portion of our revenue stream. It okay. is still, it's not, um, we're not, blowing through cameras, you know, stuff. I mean, everything we sell on Etsy too, we put it through its paces. So it goes through our service technician's hands, you know, it does a clean loop and adjust. So, you know, the, the stuff we sell is not, there. nothing's projects, nothing's, you know, needs this or that. Everything we sell and everything, including everything up on the shelf, unless, you know, someone like yourself comes in and goes like, oh, I like the weird stuff. Well, okay, yeah. maybe I'll go in the back <laughs> and I'll find some weird stuff. You but. did find some weird stuff. <laughs> yes. And you said there's more that you haven't even there's, Oh, there's plenty. Yeah. Yes, there's, but that, that stuff needs to get serviced or at yeah. least checked out so that, you know, in good conscience, we can put it on the shelf and say like, this is ready. Just load it up with some film and go shoot. Right. You know, because we don't want that to be the, you know, the fact that it's been sitting for 20 years, we right. don't, and maybe it's false. What happened to me in the Grand Canyon with the light holders? Yes, you don't exactly. want, you don't want equipment failure. No light leaks. Yeah. That's, that's a sad, that's a that's delayed a, gratification yeah. followed by being bummed out. It's and that's okay. not cool. I, the, 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 I got the, unex, the other unexpected good shot. So it happens. Good. Go um, can you think of a time when things went really wrong? What would you do about that? Things went really wrong as a business yeah. aspect. When did things get really wrong? Well, Try or I should say back in the day, well, I, it was funny because you texted me early today, and I was literally running the gross profit reports, yeah. and you, I run them. Sometimes I look back a year, but you know, in actuality, it's like you need to stay so flexible about what you're selling. You know, you just have to stay on top of that and push. You know, as a retailer, you have to just push what you're 
selling. You know, I just have to keep looking and being like, oh, okay, this time of year I'm going to be selling this. Yeah. And also, well, what's the, you know, what's being marketed? You know, these large, you know, corporation, what's, what's Kodak or Fuji or whatever, uh, what Epson is pushing. Well, I have to have that in stock and I have to, you know, be conscious of who they're marketing to and if those are my customers and put that up front. And um, right now, luckily, I have, um, I have, uh, well, a couple employees, three employees that are, are great, all part-time, but one in particular, um, Tennessee, hey, <laughs> she does a really good job with marketing um, both Instagram, you know, she does takes over the Instagram post, and she's also doing the in-store merchandising. And that mm-hmm. has has definitely made the, the kind of the curb appeal of the store, you know, um, whatever. And so we work with that because I'm always like, hey, this is what should be selling. She's like, great, she'll take it make a display and it and it, it works it's just it's a is it, but it's also a numbers game you know as far as mm-hmm. well are we is this going to appeal to one out of ten people yeah it's going to appeal to one out of four people is this going to you so know, what's you your know. what's your bread and butter is it film like what what what's the funny like, should i pull out my gross profit report <laughs> <laughs> and take a look at it so uh, uh once again it's all the revenue streams so yeah. we do services we do um we do camera repairs, uh, film processing, even though we don't do that. We have our lab that we worked with for, um, gosh, how many years now? Well, many years. Um, Oscars Photo Lab in San Francisco. They're great, you yeah. know, and they're very consistent. They work with us, too, um, you know, as far as, you know, pricing and volume and just the scheduling and stuff to, to get our stuff back. And so that's, oddly enough, even though we don't do that in-house, that's uh, our our more or less our number one thing that we Interesting. make money from. Yeah, services, are, we have a service technician. I do some of the repairs, but most of the repairs go through our service technician. Yeah. Um, he's off-site as well, and yeah. so, but I've known him for 15 plus years. Um, and then, you know, going through it, you know, we, we actually sell a lot of color film. We sell a lot of black and white film, um, you know, and then I do, I mean, I've, as you mentioned, I've augmented the past couple of years the store um, now the back room of the store is my tintype studio. Yeah, tintype uh, for our listeners uh, who may not know is where you actually it's called wet plate collodion, right? Yes. So you actually had you're actually instead of you're actually sort of making the film by hand before you yes. shoot one plate, right? Do so you want to yeah. tra- talk about that a little bit? Like what do you what do you do? How do you make a tintype? Yeah, so the, it's a process from the 1850s. It's, it's one of the earliest photographic processes. Um, so it's, you know, back in the day, you'd have a plate of iron or steel or something, and um, it was never really on tin, <laughs> but nowadays we put them on aluminum. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's aluminum that's got a black enamel on it, and you, you know, as you said, you more or less make the film. So instead of it being a flexible substrate like film, as we know it, it's a rigid piece of aluminum, and you pour on the chemistry to make it light sensitive. And um, and you have to do this just a few minutes before you want to take the picture. You load up the actual plate that you've sensitized mm-hmm. into the camera, and then expose it while it's wet. I mean, it's not dripping wet, but it's it's wet. And then you have to go back into the dark room and process it within a few minutes. Otherwise, if it dries, the the light sensitivity in the images just, just goes away. The latent image is done if it dries. Yeah. And so there's always kind of a timer in your head. Like tick, 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 tick. But if you think of like Abraham Lincoln, like those were wet plate colonies. Most likely those were, I think those were glass plates. Is that right? As a, so the same chemistry on glass would yield a glass plate negative, putting it on, you know, a piece of aluminum or, you know, with black, anything with a black on the back will read as a positive. And that's an optical illusion, right? Because it's... It, yeah, it is actually negative. It's kind of crazy, yeah, but the... the bl- bizarre. Yeah, the black. I mean, it may be beyond the scope of this particular podcast, but I just, <laughs> I just learned that last week that yeah. it's actually a negative that looks like a positive just because of what's in the back of it, which is, just blew my mind. Yeah, it is. It, the, the process itself, I mean, I, I was kind of, I'll be frank, uh, we were open here for five, six years or so, and um, maybe five years, four years, five years, and I was kind of losing my passion for photography, and I was like, oh, this isn't good. I was so caught up in the retail and yep. and just you know looking at numbers and just ah, and then I was like, you know what? I need to do something photography based, and I've always liked tintypes, the way the wet plate collodion looked. And um, it's kind I, of very unique. Look, they call it what soul capture? Is that right? There, so you could, yeah. yeah. It was. I mean, you could imagine, like when you show. Well, I mean, when I show people like the pictures that 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 moment of self realization that it's them, 
it's delayed because they're used to seeing oh a picture on your phone or whatever like oh that's what i look like that's what I, and I, mm-hmm. this comes up in the development and i i let i invite people into the dark room so they can watch it wow and they just sit there like wait whoa, whoa, whoa like kind of like that's that's me wait that's yeah. not me that's the, oh that is me and it's that yeah. that their eyes in the development process for that is actually really interesting because it kind of mm-hmm. goes from a an appear it's a it develops into a negative that right. starts appearing to be a negative that turns into looking like a positive. <laughs> that, that, that's a good that's way to explain less, it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's I think that's accurate, but very yeah. confusing. But I mean, if if our listeners have never had the opportunity to have a tintype portrait taken of them, and you and if you are in Northern California, do come please to, to see Jeremiah. But uh, yeah. there there are folks around the country. This is it's kind of like a uh, a fraternity of folks that yeah. that, that do this. Yeah, there, there's a, there's a handful of people who do it and have studios. And you're up in, or you're down in Austin, so you have Lumiere Tintype, yep. which is great. Mm-hmm. And uh, Adrian's great. Yeah, and they and there's you know there's a place in New York, and there's you know there's places there's people around that are yeah. doing it. And uh, so that generates enough revenue to be a meaningful thing, and it's also kept you loving photography, which is perhaps more important. I, I was going to say that is more important. That is, I needed I needed the boost. I needed the passion. I needed the the jolt. Because yeah. I, I wanted to stay in here, and and I love the space. I love the neighborhood. Yeah. We're in the arts district in Santa Rosa, and the neighborhood has changed dramatically in the past nine years. And there have been some good people who have moved in here, and and it was a matter of like, wow, you know, can I justify having? I mean, it's not. A, it's about six hundred square feet. The whole thing, the store, my studio, the back room, everything. So it's not a big space, but I, it was one of those like, oh, if this retail space is only taking up. 240 feet of it uh, what am i doing with the rest right? yeah and so mm-hmm. i was like well make a studio and yeah yeah and once again it was as you said it was more important for me to yeah. be re-energized and that matters that's something that small business owners don't talk about i started yeah. my company nine years ago yeah, and i started this podcast two years ago okay and i found that this podcast had much the same impact on re, you know re-energizing me with my business nice. uh, because you get to meet you know small business people first first hand and then hear the stories in it's it's all done what's unique about this podcast is that it's done in person uh-huh. so a lot of podcasts yes. are done remotely over skype but nothing yeah. replaces the story and the feeling that you get by actually sitting here yeah you know, and and we're here inside <laughs> of uh yeah i mean it's hard to explain but we're surrounded by a ton of film cameras <laughs> uh-huh. we got speed graphics and yeah. nikon f's within yeah. arm's reach yeah literally <laughs> Cool. What uh, what's next? What do you where do you see this going? Where do you see film going? Do you see it becoming more prevalent? Do you think it's still gonna remain niche? Like mean, what what do you how do you how do you see that? Uh I th- I think the you know, actually talking to uh, some of the customers in here have, mm-hmm. have good insights and things and, and one fellow was saying that, you know, if film photography was kind of approached and taught as like an art medium like painting or drawing or or something like that not that we went after we're like oh we're trying to steal away customers from digital but just ha- happily coexist yeah. you know with with the yeah, other processes and with with digital and just so like okay you can augment your digital photographic experience with some film or you know even just being able to utilize the the film cameras that we have with a you know usually like high end lenses and and stuff that was out of reach for people it's like now you can actually put your hands on them you can get a camera that cost you know whatever $2500 back in the day now you can you can buy it whether it's a you know a 4x5 or medium format or Hasselblad or something like that it's like nowadays you can actually oh if i prioritize photography i can afford a hasselblad now yeah and i can use it and i don't have to be yeah they used to cost as much as a honda civic yeah they were very expensive and now yeah you know you look around you can probably find one for you know a little kit for you know 800 bucks yeah you know 900 bucks which is still quite a bit of money but that's your main outlet as an artist yeah then that's you know people buy you know guitars are worth that much and or some people drink that much. <laughs> uh, all sorts of habits to have these yeah. days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, as, as you're saying, what's going? I I I'd like to think that film resurgence is going to continue. Yeah. Um. Uh. I will say too the struggles of being a brick and mortar retailer and and um. I think always being honest with myself that the retail sales are you know kind of what gets people in the door usually but i cannot rely on those they go up and they go down 
the profit margin and stuff is so small that the volume you have to do is is paralyzing if you ever think about it. I yeah. mean, I, have, I had my my CPA was um, he said like, okay, let's talk numbers here. How hard would it be to boost your the sales of retail goods thirty percent? And I was like, oh my god, I'd have to market this. I'm gonna have to broaden my customer base. I'm gonna have to reach out. I'm gonna have to. That'd be crazy. And then he said, okay, well, how about 30%? Increase 30% your services, like your tin type business. How much would it increase or how hard would it be to increase that? And I was like, I could do that. Yeah, that seems more, yeah, I was going to say that. And so he was just, you know, more or less like, do that. Yeah. And I'm like, but I love the retail store. He's like, you can do both, but just make sure your time and your energy is where you're making the money right. because you need to be sustainable. And, I mean, you have a social media presence, but it doesn't really emphasize that side of your business. The tin types, no, it does not. Which is, I mean, it's interesting we talk about that because right. that's, a lot of times people talk about, hey, I'm posting on Instagram, I'm posting and doing all this stuff. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you, like Kurt Vonnegut said, you are who you want to be, so mm. be really careful about who you want to be. <laughs> and uh, the, when you when you think about that, if you're thinking about your dad being the, uh, road for your business to be more successful. Yeah, you want to double down on that, right? Well, that's that. That's funny. Once again, that we're having this conversation today yeah. on Black Friday. It is <laughs> Black Friday actually? That's bizarre. <laughs> and neither you nor I really care about Black Friday. No. I, think. I mean, I went to yoga this morning, and now okay. and now we're sitting here talking about uh, analog cameras. I have no <laughs> yes. intention of going and knocking people out to get a TV for two hundred bucks. Yeah, neither of us are going to get yeah. rich, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I'm just speaking for myself. You can do that. No, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it is the, the social media. I will say the tin types. I do put a lot of energy and passion, and just kind of emotional energy into it. Yeah. I put a lot of emotional energy into the store too, mm-hmm. um, because it is. It feels like an extension of me. That's the other part too. That's it's it's hard for me to separate myself completely from the store. Mm-hmm. And because, geez, my, I'm Jeremiah of Jeremiah's Photo Corner. And so yeah. hard for me to separate that out. But there is only, you know, so much energy that I have. And, and the I love doing the tintypes. Whenever I do them and I connect with people, I realize that I should be doing this more. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it is healing Double me. Double down, man. And, and so that's, yeah. That's, that's That seems really interesting, the word healing, because it has to do with like the, the energy and what is energy giving versus what is energy taking. It's, yeah. And it's it's definitely an exchange. It's it's much more of a, I mean, I, I'll say the process itself, I, I kind of consider myself like a facilitator of the process. Sure, I have the technical knowledge and you know, I'd like to think that I have, you know, sensitivity when I'm approaching the person that I'm, I'm photographing, but I want them to have the photograph that they want of yeah. themselves. And so I always start off, you know, asking, you know, how do you want to be portrayed? Yeah. Oh, and sometimes I have answers and they're clear. And sometimes I'm like, it's just for you. Like you think about that for a little while. I'm going to go do my, yeah. you know, mix gonna, up. The I'm going to go make film. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I come back and most of the time they're, you know, kind of give me that, the nod, like. Yeah. Okay. I, I know who I, I I want to be, or yeah, you know, or or who I want to be portrayed in this image, and yeah, I just love that. I mean, I love I love that's it's it's amazing. Yeah, you it's, light up when you talk about it. Yeah, so it's great. It's <laughs> no. awesome. It's no, awesome. It's, yeah. You touched on something really really important that I want to uh, <clears throat> go back a little bit and, and and expand on, which is because this is your business and it's mm-hmm. you know Jeremiah's corner, which is here and it's got your name on it. Um, the your identity is deeply tied into the business. Yeah. And that can be an asset and that can be challenging at times, right? Like you yes. said, when things are not going well, I think it's very hard for our brains to separate uh, the business not doing well from I'm not doing well. Right. While those two things might be, you know, objectively not the same. Sure. And it, it touches on mental health and then like a lot of the things that go, that, that small business owners go through in starting their business. How do you deal with that and how do you, how have you learned how to cope with that? And, and, and because the, the times that feel good, because this is again, prospect theory, the way our brains work, Yeah. if something is plus 10, it doesn't feel as good as something that's minus 10, right? Yes. Because we see, we feel those, those bumps a lot more. So how do you, how do you work with that? Um, well, a lot of belly breathing and that's not a joke. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a lot of belly breathing and a lot of times. You know, when they say what you, when you feel like you don't have enough time to take a break, that's when you need to take a break most. And so um, I've allowed myself 
to take a break, even when I see, you know, the the things that need to be drawn, like staring at me in the face. Sometimes I'm like, I need to go to sleep. I needed to go for a hike. I need to go for a bike ride. I need to go see friends. I needed to go do something. Mm -hmm. And um, allowing myself to do that and just being like, okay, story's going to be here. But it is <laughs> – this is, it's funny. I mean, I have to laugh at it myself. But um, um, but I do look and I wasn't going to put my name on the door when I opened the store. It was just going to be called The Photo Corner. And then I talked to people, my sister and a couple of friends, close friends, and they said, oh, you've got to put, you know, everyone knows you. Everyone knows you have this knowledge base and you have this way of, you know, whatever conveying things kind of you know passively teaching people stuff things uh, you know over the counter and so they said it has to be jeremiah's photo corner i was like okay and i don't regret it at all mm -hmm. you know i don't regret it at all though i do <laughs> joke that i have created a monster in this person named jeremiah yeah where everybody wants to come in maybe that's an exaggeration most people want to come in and they want to talk to jeremiah even if it's hey jeremiah like even on the phone, they want to talk to me and then they want to ask me what time we close. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, my employees are great, intelligent. They often know that. <laughs> they know what time it closes. And and then and then the yeah. people, they, it's like I'm this touchstone that it's like if you, yeah. if you, which is as you said, it's a blessing and it's a curse. Yeah. You know, people come out of town. I love that. I do love that when people come like you. You yeah. came to Santa Rosa and you're like, I got to go to Jeremiah's photo yeah, corner. That's literally what the thought process was. <laughs> and I'm like, that's great. And yeah. I love that. I've yeah. loved we've reached I mean, I didn't, I had no idea when I first showed up here that we were going to end up doing a podcast. We yeah. just ended up talking about photography. I was right. with my mom and all that. So. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. And it was, it was, it was, it was funny. Like I started talking to you. I was like, Hey, this guy knows enough to uh, to kind of appreciate some of these weirder things we have here, yeah. and and so it's it's great. And you know, you didn't. I remember a, a, you were oh, you are Jeremiah, and I was like, yeah. yes, I yeah. am Jeremiah. I'm yeah. here. Yeah, you know, ninety five. I have a, I have a buddy who's a, uh, a kind of a hip hop artist, and mm -hmm. he talks about it like he's created this character. That he almost he says I now employ and I squeeze the juice out of that guy, you know, which is like the which is his hip hop persona. Uh -huh. um, so it's a really interesting way to think about it. Like That's... you know, you've created this monster that now it's like you know Jeremiah has to be there. I have to be there. It is crazy. I mean, I will. I don't do it so much anymore, but for a lot of days in the back. Um, I, I felt the need to talk to people. Like mm -hmm. people deserved to, to talk to me for whatever reason. That sounds, mm -hmm. that, does that sound arrogant? I'm not sure. No, but no, it was, no. it was, and so, but at the end of the day, I would lose my voice. I'd have to gargle with salty water and really not talk at the end. It was just, and then I'd have to do it the next day. I'd have to get up and do it all over again. And, and that was kind of a, a wake up call. As you said, you're like, your body tells you, like, you can't do that. I can't talk to all 40, 45 people that come in the door and then answer the phone 20 times like you just you can't do that there's yeah. limitations to that and so um yeah and so being aware of that and um yeah but then also looking as you say like looking at the money and be like okay what's most important what what do i have to do as the business owner you know what what knowledge can i apply and what can i share with my employees mm -hmm. to make sure that what they're doing is adding to those revenue it streams. It dovetails with what your needs are. And it, you mentioned another thing that's really powerful and important is that you spoke to your CPA who helped you with these things. Yeah. I have found sometimes that things that should be extraordinarily obvious to me and that are extraordinarily obvious to me when I look at other people's businesses yeah, are not as obvious when I look at my own business. Sure. So having somebody that you can bounce those ideas with yeah. is really powerful. Yeah. Right? Oh, it's it. I, best investment ever you call and be like I like to make an appointment yeah. there's probably a handful more in the bay I maybe I don't know I haven't really researched I mean yeah. I, I know there's a, I'd be amazed if there are more than like a hundred people nationwide that yeah. are doing that have studios the, yeah yeah I don't think I don't think so yeah I that's I mean uh, I know like four of them but yeah yeah there's yeah but I mean that's that's the beauty of it you know yeah. too is that you know people who can come here and be like and there are some people who well like yourself who have had multiple people have you know multiple people or you get multiple tin types taken mm -hmm. 
you know, I've had people come in from, you know, New York or whatever and being like, oh, you do tin types too? Great. I got this one, you know, from this guy in New mm-hmm. York and I got this one from this guy, you know, down the south or whatever. And and so I'm like, oh, that's kind of fun. That yeah. you, you know, collect, like, collect your tin type. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, because we all have different styles, you yeah. know, it's, you know, some are a little more bright and cheery and some are a little more dark and moody. And yeah, and, a lot uh, goes into it. Yeah. You were talking even like mixing your own chemicals makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. So the the chemistry it's crazy. You can you can change the the contrast and kind of the aesthetics of it. You let it age, kind of like a fine wine. Yeah, you know? you <laughs> mix it up and then let it age, and yeah. so you can kind of mix the different. Man, that sounds dangerous. Sounds like another rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> oh, you haven't even seen the dark room after no. the after this. I'll have to uh, show you the so dark, dark room. room and just, okay. I'm sure you'll just shake your head like, yeah, oh my I'm, god. Yeah, and I'll probably walk out of here with another camera and just like, <laughs> shaking my head here like I need yeah, like I need another camera. Okay, uh, what's the number one lesson that you would give to other small business owners, people who are considering starting their business, who maybe are in the middle of running their business right now? What's the number one thing that you'd want to share with them? Who, um, I would say, boy, that's um, well, if they're going into retail, I would say use unless your retail market and your retail field, the field of whatever you're going into, has a higher profit margin mm-hmm. on the hard goods that you're selling that you need to supplement that with I don't say as many services as possible but whatever people are coming in the door asking mm-hmm. for pay attention to that and then be like oh people need their cameras fixed oh people need like what you said with digital we do sensor cleanings and we repair digital cameras and we pay repair this or or people come in wanting their whatever it is you know whatever they're that but pay attention to that and just know that the retail sales don't have to be that the main thing especially in this day and age where you are competing with you know everybody online you know whoever's online and and so it's it's not you know a race to the bottom as far as pricing goes it's just have the the merchandise you know, to attract the people or to augment your services or augment their interests, mm-hmm. interests, but realize there are plenty of other things that you can do. Use your, I should say, like use your talent and your knowledge that you have. I don't say anybody can have a retail store. Anyone can open a retail store, but to have a successful retail store, you got to be smart. You got to be savvy mm-hmm. and you got to stay flexible and you really have to have just pay attention to what those services is and that uh, the uh, services are. That's where my CPA, his kind of voice you know, even though I only see him once or twice a year, it's his voice is like, you know, you're not going to, you know, if you're making 9% on Epson inks, you're not going to be here in a year. Yep. And so that's, that's where it's like, okay, well, let me do, you know, tintypes. Let me take mm-hmm. portraits. Let me teach classes. That's yeah. another thing I do. I do, oh, I wow. do one-on-one classes. I also go to the JC and yeah. the junior college and I'll, I'll teach them portrait lighting in the high school I go over and... Have you thought about creating content online and doing like a Patreon or something like that? Uh, funny, actually, my one customer, um, one employee that yeah. I just hired recently, he, he was, I, I think he was pretty serious. He was like, you should have a YouTube page. Yeah. Like you yeah. should just... I've spoken to several people recently. Seth Lee Jones in Tulsa, Oklahoma, does is, is starting to do this with his. Uh, he has a very unique way of playing the guitar and okay. like selling his chord charts and things like that. Um, and it's come up several times with people. Uh, I was uh, I was just at the um, at a place called the Wizard Academy, which is mm-hmm. a teach teach you all kinds of really interesting ways to approach uh, business and storytelling in Texas. And I interviewed. At this point, it's not. It hasn't aired when we're rolling right now. By the okay. time this airs, it will have aired an episode with Ryan Dice, who is a chairman there, and they also have a uh, whiskey school on site, and they've grown through their YouTube channel. Okay. Um. So yeah, I think there could be a big opportunity there for you because then that, like, if you can amplify that Jeremiah that that you get when you walk in the door, yeah, there could be a lot there, right? Yeah. Then maybe they won't need necessarily. They'd be like, "Yeah, I saw Jeremiah. What he said on YouTube, but I want to talk to your other nah, employee." I don't know. I think it might make that problem worse. You might get more people here, but that's a high quality problem. Yeah. All right, Jeremiah Flynn, pleasure to have you on the Very show. Good, thanks, Pablo. All right, <laughs> take care, man. Small business war stories. Small businesses are the soul of America. This is where they tell their stories.
I am your host, Pablo Fuentes.